Hi, I'm Chris from Sea Welton Design, and welcome to another Lumion tutorial. 11 has just released. Lumion 11 came out today. If you haven't had an opportunity to take a look at Lumion's release trailer, I highly recommend taking a look at that one first. They always do an incredible job. Take a look at the big new features and how they showcase them. And when you have questions, this is the video to come to. So this is my tour of new features where we're going to take a look at Lumion 11, all of the new features, major and some minor ones, and I'm going to showcase them. I'm going to open them up. We're going to work through it and I'm going to show you how they actually work, how you can adjust them and some of my thoughts, my opinions and um, even what I can see myself doing with these effects and others that maybe you hadn't considered. So with that, let's go ahead and jump right into Lumion and go over some of these new features. So here we are in the start menu of Lumion 11. Every version revamps this just a little bit and this is the case here as well in Lumion 11. We have a cleaner new background, but good news is we do get some new stuff really. Some incredible new examples, in fact, uh, realistically nine new examples although three of them are the same you know reuse models but they've been retouched up each one is focused on teaching specific aspects and I'm going to be jumping around in uh, throughout this tutorial showcasing all of the new ones that come with Lumion 11 and demonstrating the effects in there but also we get a couple new um, starter effects. We have a beach environment now, a des desert environment. I think this is the same suburban environment. Maybe it's been touched up, but we have a winter environment and then a sh design showcase. These are really cool. Uh, I love the idea of having some some more starter content that's just empty, but already has a couple things populated in it. We already have trees going on here. You know, if we have a desert project. You know, we're, you're covered. If you need that big, tall mountain, you're good to go, or some winter trees. So I'm not going to take a look at all of them right now, but remember that Lumion is giving you some more example scenes and starter scenes. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so this is the new museum scene. It's kind of a really cool urban setup that's really a good a good building to practice your angles and effects on it's really interesting intriguing the new ortho effect and some other effects but really do some wonders on this kind of building so lumion has it kind of staged as a winter setting as well showcasing some of that precipitation effects and in you know lighting in that certain situation very cool what I'm actually going to talk about first, though, in this scene, is a basic tutorial mode. So if you are brand new to Lumion and you don't know where anything is, this might be really useful for you. Down Now when you go down to the question mark, it'll actually start a tutorial. So if you want to do a tutorial about object placement, it'll go through, you hit start, and it's going to give you all these different steps and showcase and highlight different aspects and buttons to push. It's uh, it's really useful. I, I mean, I'm assuming I've known Lumion for a long time now, so this would just kind of annoy me. And if you need to get out of it, you could just do this. But that's where you can find interactive tutorials inside of Lumion. Great if you're brand new to Lumion, or maybe you need a refresher. Okay, so let's cover some really quick user interface updates. There's nothing big here, but I want to showcase some things that they have focused on in this release. You know, there's little things like they've moved these around a little bit. That's a little different than it was in 10. There'll be some different screens that, that pop up that look more refreshed. But for the most part, there's only a few sections that have been focused on. One thing is the settings tab here now has has been organized into three separate categories here. And what I'm going to do is also introduce proxies. This is awesome for those who have really heavy scenes or have hardware that aren't, that isn't powerful enough to really move around freely. Lumion introduced these proxies now that are set to off right now. But the idea is when you set these to on, 
Lumion will start to replace objects with little bounding boxes like this. This is a really light scene, so it's probably not the best example, but it makes it so you're moving around much quicker, so you don't have that one FPS, you know, uh, trying to move around your scene. You, I, I'm sure you've all experienced it. Lumion is trying to be a little bit more zippy. This is this is really awesome. I've, I've opened some really heavy scenes, and it makes it so you can navigate quite easily. Now, I also want to throw out a bonus here. I just switched this to on, and it was off before. So, auto has the goal of replacing things whenever the frame rate, from what I understand, whenever the frame rate drops below 24, it'll start utilizing proxies that kind of keep a constant frame rate of at least 24 frames. So it won't always be on, but it, when you need it, it'll jump it on to keep you at a constant frame rate so things appear really smooth without proxying everything. Now again, when you hit the render button, no matter what you have proxies set on, just remember that's always going to have everything on. This is just a build mode kind of speed away. It also does show up in movie mode, see, to help things scrub quicker. But you can always turn them off again if you absolutely want to see everything. So great new addition. I'm a heavy model user, and I'm very happy to have an option to be able to move around my scene. I, I personally don't mind if the render time takes a little bit longer. If it's going to take 10 hours as opposed to 8 or even 6 hours, it's not a huge deal to me. But it really gets frustrating when you're trying to edit things and Lumion is just crawling. This will help with that. All right, moving on to, if we'll go into one of these modes here, Lumion has, see if we go to something with sliders, has added a type in value on every slider you'll see in the user interface in Lumion 11. Now the secret is that you could have always typed in the values by double clicking, turns red, you gotta delete, and then you can input a value. But I do like that they made that even easier by just typing it in here. So if you need to know a specific focal distance here, you could you could just say, I need it to be 65 meters or whatever. You could just type it in. That's everywhere, not just effects. So that's a great thing to try to focus on. They had a feature that was kind of semi-hidden and made it so all users can e easily access it. Now, another really cool effect that's come in is called high quality theater mode. This is super cool. So if you're in photo mode or movie mode, if you hit F11, you'll go into basically a full screen interface of this viewport right here. And what is really cool about this it's not just like build with effects. You also have the ability to get skylight preview. So you can move around freely. I'm in photo mode. I can move around freely anywhere in your whole scene and then render with that skylight preview. Really cool. Now let's try this in video mode or movie mode. In movie mode, we also have this ability and we have the timeline playing right here. And anytime we stop, we can do a skylight preview, but we, if we move around and hit play, it's gonna right, go right back to where it was on the camera. But it is cool that you can quickly just kind of go around Decide to look this way, even check it out with a skylight preview. And if you just hit play, it'll keep going. And if you move the screen, the cursor off of this bar down here, it will actually eventually go away. 
And this kind of opened the door to another possibility or, or use for this that maybe Lumion didn't intend, but I think is actually really powerful. This, you could just screen capture this and get the fastest <laughs> draft rendering ever out there. Obviously, if you're running below f um, frame rate, then uh, then it won't work out super well. But there's times when you need to give a really rough draft out, and you just even rendering the lowest quality just might take too long. I don't know. This is an option to just send something out and be like, here's the camera path. Here's what's kind of what it's going to look like without even having to render. Of course, you could have done that before too with the viewport, but it was just more cropped. So that's the high quality theater view. Really cool new things. Okay, so now we're in a new beach house setting here. Another example scene that comes with Lumion 11. And let's jump into a couple new features as well to showcase in this scene. Coming along with the user interface, a big change that Lumion has implemented is in the new color selector. So if we select the material, Most all have a certain colorization slider here. And when you click on the color, we had this type of uh, interface here where we had to basically just kind of mix colors around and uh, try to get the color we need. Or you could bring them in through SketchUp or your modeling software, or you had to find the hex code and paste it in. It was kind of uh, unintuitive and, and clunky, and I've been asking for a long time for them to, uh, to touch this up and make this a little bit easier, and they have definitely done that now. So this still already looks a little bit different. Before we had just kind of colors and we had a value slider and the colors were at the top. Um, now it's this interface, and if you go to show more, we can now input RGB or HSV, and then here's hex code down here. So if we had RGB 40, 40, 40, I don't know what that is. Apparently it's a sort of dark gray, 70. So it works this way now. Another thing along with that too, is we get some RAL color palettes. Like these are, standardized colors that you'll easily find online. They're reference colors. And um, sometimes when I'm, when I'm in here and I just need to create some sort of brown or some, some sort of color, I'm just not very good at mixing things together to get exactly the color I want. I really appreciate having these, these, different, these different swatches I could just grab from. Like I'm gonna need some sort of, you know, here, brown. And I get all these different browns here. Let's let's up the colorization so it's actually affecting it. But maybe I shouldn't choose a material that's in the so much in the shade. But as you can see, yeah, we have all these different color influences we can just grab from, or say we need different violets. It's just a nice little trick that um, that Lumion's added in to make life easier. Color is, is super important in architecture and, and paint and materials. Um, and now we get quite a bit more options. I did do a tutorial talking about how to pick colors from the screen and quickly paste them into Lumion. That could potentially still work by pasting into here through the hex code or using Photoshop or whatever software to get an RGB code and to input it right there. I still kind of wish Lumion had it just like right here but they've got, they got 90% of the way there. Um, I'm happy. So that's the new color picker. So among the many features that have come out with Lumion 11, um, I definitely stick orthographic projection as one of the top ones. There's a lot of power in this one. And, and although it seems kind of lame, 
in a way, just on paper. You know, Revit in Ortho and, and SketchUp's in Ortho. What's so special about that? You know, it is really cool being able to have that capability inside of Lumion with Lumion's effect, Lumion's library, all the things that Revit and SketchUp don't have or any of these other CAD programs. It's certainly something that, you know, could have been there much earlier, but they did it and they did it right because they could have definitely done this wrong. They could have done this and made it really clunky and not worked with all the effects, but it is almost seamlessly done. There's there's hardly anything you can't do by switching to ortho. And I, I, I'm i not a, a developer, but it seemed like a pretty tricky challenge to work with an engine that's supposed to do perspective and lighting and shadows to do ortho. I don't even pretend to understand all of that, but they did it really well. And I have a lot of cool things I want to jump into it. So it's going to be its own in-depth video. But with that said, we'll do a really quick overview of it so you can understand how it works. As I mentioned, I'm going to go a lot more in depth on this effect. So I'm just going to really briefly cover how it works and kind of what things kind of look like and what you can do with it. So first, we'll need to go into a setting where we can add it as an effect. So we'll store this camera and we'll go ahead and find it under the camera effects orthographic view. Now nothing's changed yet, but here's our interface right here. Enable is still set to off. We have a near clip and a far clip and a fill color. So let's take a look at those we'll do after we enable. So pretty much right away, nice and smoothly, we're in this orthographic view. And everything actually moves around just like it normally would in perspective. That's definitely something Lumion massaged in here, because otherwise this could be really tricky to work with. And another really cool thing that they've done is they've given us these nice sliders to help control. So if you want to quickly get a perfect elevation shot, you can set, they'll snap to like 45 degrees and 90. So let's try to get like an, a front elevation here. Move over and then change our pitch to zero. Kind of move this down and we have an orthographic shot right here. That is a perfect elevation right there. Except I wasn't, I was cropping it out a little bit. So now, this is where we can utilize these clip planes. The near clip can help us block off anything in front of the house that we, may, we might not want. I actually don't mind the trees in front of the house here, but if you want to just get those all away, you can use that near clip plane to, to cut them away. It's kind of tricky in this shot. And in far clip, we can get rid of the mountain and even the trees right behind the house, if you wanted. So. You gotta be careful with the clip planes. I think that's the near clip doing that. And then you can just control what, how much you want back there. And you have sort of an elevation view. Maybe you lift up right here. And you have a perfect elevation. That leads us to the last part. We can change the sky out for any sort of color that we'd ever want. We could have a generic blue if we wanted to, which that looks bad or just white or black. So it leads to a lot of artistic options. And that's just the elevation view. We could also, oops. If you get a little, it can get pretty squirrely. If you're not, if you're not careful, Lumion has set up some pretty good guidelines to help out. It used to be a little bit worse, but um, you can switch back to 3D to kind of get some better views because it's easy to get a little off in that. Um, orthographic view. Remember, you can switch it right back and forth here as well. And then if you get lost, you can always change these headings. So let's also do a top-down shot. So we have a perfect sight shot right here. Now one thing you might have to worry about too is you might have some weird shadow things going on. If for whatever reason, the shadows are looking really fuzzy, like like this or something. You might just need to play with your shadow range. That's still something that is just kind of a limitation in this ortho. This shadow range button will help clear out those those shadows so they're nice and crisp, like this. 
right, I think the only other thing I want to showcase is that it can be used as well in animation in kind of a weird way. So we had a keyframe here, we'll have a keyframe here. 10 seconds linear. Okay, so if we add orthographic here, under camera, so there's this edit camera button, everything else is the same. So we can enable it. So this is how you kind of get orthographic into camera, into animation movement. Go to edit camera, and then we have that 3D, 2D toggle here. So we want to start here and say we want to do here, and then we just want to do like an orbit kind of shot or something. So now, we have kind of an orthographic orbit. Um, made this a little more complicated than it needed to be, but if you do a look, look at fixed point, it'll fix that. So some really intriguing type of animations and some really cool looking shots. And of course, if we did it, um, they had an example right here. You could add certain stylized effects and get even a floor plan kind of look out of the same ortho. So I guess I went a little more in depth than I expected, but we're going to be doing a lot more in my next tutorial and some really cool scenarios and projects that I opened in this. It just looks so cool in ortho. Okay, so here is a third example here. Example seam glass house. So this is the actual glass house. Some people can mix up the Farnsworth house with the glass house. They liked glass and then internationals to design. But yeah, so it's a very simple scene and we're gonna utilize this scene to go over a couple other minor effects. This is, you know, this one I, I totally passed off at first when I looked at it, but the more I kind of played with it, I'm, I really am starting to like it. The uh, raindrops on glass effect. So this, if you go into pure glass on the slider, you will see a new section here that says force rain streaks. Everything is set kind of right in the middle. You can go down to nothing or enhance it even more. But the only way to activate it, because this might confuse you, is you need to have the, of the precipitation effect going, which, you know, makes sense, but I actually was a little confused by it at first. So let's go ahead and go into a movie section here and get right up to that glass. Now let's... Let's go from the inside out. I mean, what are you going to see <laughs> on a rainy day in the glass house? You're going to see a lot of these raindrops. Okay. So let's just add a, sh a couple shots right here. And then we need to hit that precipitation effect. Let's uh, have the camera pull in a little bit more closer to the glass. All right. So as of right now, we're not seeing much on the glass. So now in the precipitation effect, we're getting three new sliders that have to do with this. Rain streaks, which is com set to completely off right now. Once we set it on, we'll actually see rain streaks. We can change their size and offset. And this might be a little confusing too. The Lumion added some polygon materials that look like um, raindrops on the glass, but they were static. This is animated. So let me, let me change that so we're looking just right here, static camera. So something important to realize is this is completely independent from precipitation phase and quantity or if it's rain or snow if it's snowing it'll still be rain it's kind of this independent little little thing that adds on to um, this effect and we're just seeing a moderate amount of water so if we go back into this mode here we can go back to this force raindrops and we can either increase the intensity of that or make it so even though it's raining 
this particular sheet of glass does not get any water on it. That's boring. So turn that back on, boost it up. Turn on some fog. It's just a nice rainy day looking from the outside. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the raindrops on glass effect. Man, there's some really cool shots. You know, atmospheric, emotional shots you can you can capture with that. They they did it really well. It, it looks really cool. It's a it isn't a little a niche little thing, but they 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 did it well. Okay, so here's a cool new effect we can jump into. We got this fire pit right here. Now Lumion's fire. <laughs> I used to teach in my university new students Lumion, and without <laughs> without question at one point everyone's gonna put their project on fire and I thought it was super fun and cool in Lumion but oof, the fire still looks okay but it, it was starting to get a little bit dated in the in the qual as the quality of Lumion has has increased some of the things like this are starting to look a little bit more dated but Lumion has gone ahead and added a new type of fire called volumetric fire okay so here they are they are in the fire tab in special effects and they are after all the regular fires going on here um, they give us a couple interesting shapes to start off with square less intense square smaller square line circle ring square just kind of a random shape so there's some cool templates that they've given you it's kind of like water you can customize water and as much as you need but Lumion gave us some presets just to make things to make life easier so here's a nice simple square fire and we have a couple sliders here we can change it's kind of like a linear light we can change its width and length we can change its height Turbulence, some something that affects the way it looks. It kind of honestly looks like water in a certain way. And then they have intensity. Now what you're probably wondering is what is this load button? Well, Lumion has given us the ability to customize the shape and some of the properties of the fire. And this is this is really interesting. It really opens the door to a lot of different a lot of different possibilities that I'm, I'm I'm curious what people come up with. Let's play around with some of these. So this is from what I understand, the way this fire works is if you load a map, black will be read as no fire. White will be read as the most fire. Gray will be somewhere in between, so it's a really harsh fall off. But if you have solid colors, they will actually tint the color of the fire. So, I have a couple examples we can pull from right now. So I had some flags I jumped into. Now, before we even load this, we should be able to look at an image like this, this flag. This is the European Union flag. We have blue and yellow. We don't have any black or white. So this should just create a fire that is blue and yellow. And oh, it's not very bright. Let's let's play around with this a little bit. All right. There we go. Oh, maybe we need to maximize it. You're kind of starting to see that. You're starting to see that flag effect in there. It didn't affect the intensity of the fire. But it's affecting the color. Oh, and there you go. You can see the stars right there. So let's try another one. Here's a gradient, just a black to white. So the white should be fully intense. The black should have nothing. So like I said, it falls off pretty harshly. Here's white, and then the, 
to the black. You're not really seeing it in height, you're more seeing it in kind of density. Especially look at that texture that, that shows up on the ground. It slowly diminishes. And we do have some little particulates of fire on that side. So that's a black and white image. And here's an interesting flag. So we got a color value, color value, another color value, and black. So this should create green fire, yellow fire, nothing, yellow fire, blue fire. Yep. US flag. The white should be full intense fire and then some blue and white. So I don't, I don't even know how, that, how well that's going to read. Oh, there you go. America. Fire. Explosions. <laughs> no. <laughs> so the white isn't white because it's become fully intensive fire. And then the red and blue is, is tinted. Oh, you can see the stars. Oh, let's try one more. Let's try this guy. There you go. Green, red. Okay, so played around a little bit. I, I also did make this one in... Oops, why is it defaulting to PNG? I did make this one in Photoshop. It had a little bit of everything. Black, nothing. There's some gradient, but you can barely really tell right here. And then the two solid color values. So you get the idea. <laughs> I don't know how much people will be customizing it, but it is cool that Lumion has left the uh, the door open to be able to do some really custom things with this, as opposed to a really closed off system. But right now we just have a simple fire to light right in here. There's the new volumetric fire. Looks a lot better. Okay, so I've taken a step out of the glass house here. I'm just going to delete this ring here. Because we're going to jump into the new... The new additional effects to the open street map, which have has really surprised me. I mean, street map started with just kind of gray ground with some buildings that weren't really accurate, to buildings that were more accurate and customizable, and they added height maps, and now they've added satellite imagery to the distant landscape, and it is really cool. So let's go ahead and jump into here. So open street maps and our landscape. I'm gonna turn it on. It's probably gonna ask us about you know hitting OK. Alright. The check. Alright, so we can click on here and pick anywhere in the world we want. Now I'm gonna pick somewhere that has hills and mountains kind of right next to it to really showcase this. Sierra City, California. All right, so there's my area right here. It's actually in a valley. So something to understand is this is the open street map range, which means this is the range of buildings and this kind of this kind of uh, stylized terrain. This is how you control the scale of that. Then we got toggle height maps, and then also satellite maps. And it's kind of pre-downloading things. Yeah, like I said, a valley. So let's go ahead and start this. It's gonna take a little bit longer because there's more textures and more data to grab. Not too long. All right, so there we have it. We have textured mountains in the background and our open street map is right here. So if our project was still somewhere along here. In fact, where is it? Oh, there it is. It's inside of another building. Um, so we do have a couple toggles in open street map. If we don't like 
this kind of grade terrain. We can turn that off. That is uh, land use and earth. So now it's just showing the satellite terrain. We could even tell to turn the buildings off if we wanted to. And I kind of want to right here. You can turn the satellite on and off or roads or water. So now if I look in my glass house, I realize I live in a nice lush canyon. I'm kind of curious what the, uh, how this stuff all looks. The, the ter yeah, look at that. Get this kind of shot. Yeah, so we've just completely changed the surroundings of our building here. Very impressive. Let's try one more. Let's try... Let's try a bigger city area. This is a small town with some iconic mountains in the background that we just have to have or it just doesn't work. Um, I think I've done this many times before, but I'm going to do... Um, Salt Lake City. Here, I'll do... Yeah, we'll do Salt Lake City. So, careful, you can only grab this blue amount, which is a huge amount, but still not that big. The bigger mountains happen to be down here by Sandy, so I'm actually going to try this. Pretend like my building's right at the edge right here. And I will grab a lot of as many buildings as I can. All right, so we'll let that go. Okay, so it looks like I did land right in a neighborhood. And there's the mountains right in the background. Oof, unfortunately I got a, a crease <laughs> from different dates of satellite capture, but that's okay. Something also important to know is the resolution and density of the satellite image near, near the uh, site is higher than the farther stuff. They blurry it out here which is what you would do and I would say that the the clarity up close it's it's okay we pay a lot at my company for near map so getting this for free is it's not bad Ezri, I guess I think where to get it from I think that's what it said so again we can now we have a whole some cooler mountain settings in our our project you know this this is really all I've wanted for a long time just I don't need high resolution terrain geometry or textures in the distance I just wanted something that looks like the iconic mountains and I've I've used several plugins and I've done tutorials talking about how I grab context and man Lumion nailed it here because that's that's the biggest thing I need to for I sometimes I wish I could grab a little bit more and the open street map buildings and everything are still just kind of okay, but that's not Lumion's fault. That's just how open street map works, so we can turn back turn everything back on. There wasn't very many buildings here, but yeah, so that's open street map. That one blew me away because I'm just like, okay, more open street map. No, this this is great. This is really this is really great for I mean if you live in a flat land, I guess it's not that exciting, but I have projects in San Francisco, LA, and all these other areas with mountains that you need that. You, you can't do it without it. So Lumion has that all-inclusive added inside now. Okay, so this is the urban development scene. This is a really beautiful one. They use this in the Lumion 9 trailer, at least a similar 
a similar setting with this building. This is a great urban environment for practicing, you know, having people walking and cars going. They're showcasing several new Lumion cars in here too. So in this setup, I'm going to talk about the new metallic car effect. Now this seems kind of interesting, but it really, <laughs> it's, it, really actually does quite a bit to uh, Lumion's default cars. I remember before I was telling Lumion we could really use some better looking cars before they were that great. And they bought some really nice quality cars. They, they really did. Um, I still wouldn't, if I have a rendering and there's a car right in front of the camera, I have, I have some like hero cars or cars that are really high poly, 3ds Max. Ones that I would still put right next to the camera. They're like the equivalent of a fine detail nature trees, but for cars. Because the Lumion cars, the Evermotion ones, they're, they're good. But I don't know. I think something with their paints just made them not look as realistic. But the new metallic slider on the car paint actually does quite a, quite a bit to help. So this is the new slider, metallic paint. This is before, after. Let's take this Aston Martin-like car here. Before, after. And you know, honestly, it's not a binary thing too. Um, there's a lot of play right at the end here where you can get not quite fully metallic, but you can get some, some boosted reflectiveness. Reflectivity, this uh, ref you can get some boosted reflectivity is what, and that's what kind of can really help out. The only thing to watch out for is on white cars, whites will turn kind of a silver, grayish color. I mean, not a huge deal. That's that's what would happen, but just something to keep in mind. They really do. Um, they really do make a big difference when you hit the render button. They look. A little better than Lumion cars now. So that's that's always great. I mean, I like having my own high quality cars, but I don't have time to place them all in there and they all get heavy. So anything Lumion does to beef, to beef up their own their own uh, library of cars is, is very much very much welcome. So it let's do a quick little shot right here too. We got some wet ground and everything. That's a little intense, but yeah, it looked good. It, it makes that little bit of difference. Okay, so while we're in this scene, I'm going to talk about the new fine detail shadows that come from spotlights in Lumion 11. So we're just go ahead and go inside. So I noticed there's this really cool 3D. 3D mesh going on right here. That's definitely something really limiting to Lumion's default uh, to Lumion's default spotlights. And you will see. Let's go ahead and set up a couple of these. Just going along the wall. I'll pull them out a little bit from the wall like that. So you see it's creating shadows, but in very low resolution and very limited. Those shadows are what make everything kind of happen on interiors. So the fact that it's not able to really capture all that was definitely a big weakness. Now I'll show you what the new fine detail shadows will do to these little details now. So let's go into a photo mode and I have this scene kind of set up. Let's go ahead and get kind of close. In the shadow, it's the same toggle, it's the same effect we had before, they just added functionality to it. So I'm gonna turn it off, and it's gonna give me a better preview. It starts to capture them here, and then we got nothing right here, when they were totally be shadows. So now when we toggle it on, now we're capturing all of those types of shadows. All of that detail is being captured now. But it's also limited to what you're actually seeing on the screen, but yeah, big jump, big jump in quality at no cost, really. 
This this is one of my favorite features that came to Lumion. Amazing, amazing results at very little price. Skylight's amazing, but it comes at a price. This this is one of those things that's just done really well. So that is the fine detail shadows for spotlights. And while we're on the topic of spotlights here, and I have them on the wall, one of the newest features in Lumion 11.2 is the ability to add and load custom IES profile lights. For those who have a lot of experience rendering, most people know what these are. They're custom light shapes for specific, uh, you know, they're set up by, they can be set up by engineers or just uh, people selling, you know, the light fixture, explaining the shape of everything. Kind of fun if you hold alt over this, you can actually see the, sh the, uh, the profile here the shape that it's spitting out, or that's that's a weird verb, but the shape that it's producing, and this is kind of from the side profile. So we can load IES profile lights, and if you don't already have a whole library of these from past renderers or current renderers, um, I just quickly went online and found this website. Thank you, Derek Jensen. And he gave a whole zip file for free. And let's go ahead and test some of these out. So, go to load IES, um, IES profiles. So, let's try this. Um, maybe I should actually do this on a, uh, let's go ahead and select all. Oh, now it's its own thing. Okay, let's actually go outside and take a look at these on like a wall. Because that little mesh was not helping us see. All right. So there's our shape going on right there. That's exactly what's showing right there. Let's go ahead and load a couple of these. See, it's changed. It's showing some more intensity over here. There's a bollard. Oh, look at that. So it's not, it's... It's hollow, like kind of in the center and going all around like a bollard would. Do I have any bollards in this scene? Oh, uh, yeah. No, they're probably not lit up bollards, but let's try it. Oh, look at that. Is that because it's actually blocking it? Yeah, it's because it's blocking it, but still, you can see the effect it's doing, not just in the side view, but from this profile. Let's go ahead and get that back. I'll just try a couple other ones, but you guys get the idea. <clears throat> this opens up a world of, of possibilities if you're really looking for that exact type of of light detail. Parallel beam, trapezoid, X diffuse, jellyfish. Whoa. So, define spot. So you're now, now we are no longer limited to whatever Lumion has given, given us by out of the box, like these guys. Uh, they were always sufficient for me, but this is, this is great for those who have that need. Um, so yeah, that, I think that's a new sample, but you see how different and specialize that kind of setup is. Look at that. So, very cool. That is the new IES profiles that you can load into your lights as long as well as the uh, fine detail shadows. All right, so really quick on this scene, I might as well talk about a couple more library options that have come in for Lumia 11. I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe out all the cars in this scene and start looking at what new cars we have going. So, if you did not know this before, a great new feature Lumion has added is they like to hide their new their new content and it's really hard to know which one's new, which one's old. But if you put in the new the tag new, we're going to have only the new vehicles or new objects that come out in 11. So, I'll just go ahead and line them kind of up. It'll be a car show in the street. And 
Yep, some of these are very, very obviously specific real cars. My coworker drives that car right there. That's pretty cool. They added. And we got some more like utility vans instead of just sports cars and stuff. And let's go ahead and grab all of those and make them metallic. Bam. Looks awesome. There we go. Look at those awesome cars. So. Okay, so might as well look at some other content too. Let's go ahead and get some less harsh shadows. If we go into people, same deal. Type in new. So we got some cyclists, people sitting down. It's the same character. They've molded into different. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna put up a rendering of of kind of all of the of the new people put together. I'm not gonna sit here and place them all. We got a different type of dog, but you know it's more of the same. These are these are great, great quality. But there is something worth mentioning as well. Is that there is a new category in the people animals for static. 3D people. This is like what you would get uh, if you just bought AXYZ models and just couldn't animate them to get them into Lumion. You just get them kind of like this. So it's it's kind of nice to have just some alternatives. I still am pretty wary. I thought that was she had a mask. It's like wow, how did Lumion know? It's just a wallet. <laughs> so um, I'm still worried about frozen people. It's probably because I do mostly animations. But for stills, they're great, and we're at a distance. So that's the new category. And, um, you know, there's there are not much else calling out. They're just the quality you would expect coming into Lumion. They've gotten really pretty decently good at this. Don't put them right in front of the camera, but they look pretty good near it. Um... Same deal here. Type in new. Yeah, I'll make bigger thumbnails. So more Evermotion products. I, I'm, uh, I am a big fan. That's twelve pages of this of new objects and content. Really good looking stuff. You're, you're never you're never running out of of content with Lumion. Wow, I mean, <laughs> we got everything now. I mean, what else can we need? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Again, I'm just gonna roll some some footage of all of the content instead of trying to place them all. Oh, look at that little outlets. Just just little things that just can add a little bit of realism. Usually, I have to bring this stuff in from SketchUp, and it's it's just, it's just an extra step. Oh, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm really making art here. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if there's any new outdoor. Well, of course there is. So more, more kind of content here. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> I like it. So, oh, look at that lights. If only you can make them light up. Anyways, that's uh, like always. There's just more more content a coming for Lumion. Uh, type in new to find them all. I used to create a specific uh, set that would make your file have them as your favorites, but with this new new t <laughs> with the ability to search new that's made that kind of obsolete but go ahead and go and add to favorites so you can also easily grab them from right here okay so this brings us to the animated phasing effect this is a awesome new effect that 
I really want to dive into. And so I'm going to create a separate tutorial really going in depth and showcasing a lot more of the guts of this effect. It's something that Lumion has developed very well. They've listened to us. Um, I worked with them refining this effect and everything I asked for, they, they did. They really put it together. They really listened to the feedback and I'm super impressed with what has come out of it. It is, it is so awesome. We're gonna do a really quick overview in this video though. I'm not gonna completely black it out, but I'm just kind of selflessly, uh, but just keep an eye out for another tutorial because we're gonna really dive into this one. Okay, so here we are in the winery example scene. This is a really cool scene. It's got these vineyards out here. It's got some beautiful atmospheric shots that are built in with it. And it is also an example scene for the phasing effect, which we're gonna hit next. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna do a much more in-depth tutorial to really jump into the phasing effect and do some really complex, cool things with it. But let's take a look at what's built into this scene already. So with the phasing effect, we're able to grab multiple selections and control the way they come in with options. There's a lot of pieces. Each piece was brought into Lumion so it could be animated separately. So we can see these really intriguing, cool ways to dynamically introduce the architecture. We're building the whole structure, coming together. And then we have just a different direction for setting up the phasing. These are great examples. I'll do a really quick example right now. Let's go ahead and just I'm going to work on these groups of trees right here. So only in animation mode, obviously. I'm going to go over to here. I don't want to select too much at once. Um, actually, those are... Uh, let's just go ahead and do our own objects right now. Okay, so I'm just going to place a couple of real basic trees in a line. It doesn't have to be trees, it could be anything. Pretty much anything is animatable at this point. Let's give ourselves some time. And then we're going to go to effects, and it's in the animation tab, animated phasing. So we need to go into edit to get anything done in this effect. And this opens up this really cool user interface that's that's been very well polished and developed. So we start here, we have our timeline. I set it to 15.36 seconds, so it, it's set to auto. So this is our entire animation clip. We could change that and manually input what we needed, but we're gonna keep it to auto right now. So this, number one, is the first group of animations. Now, we can go and name it whatever we want up here. But first we need to populate or, or assign objects to this group. So once we go into this, we get a new user interface where we can select by categories. And we can also change stagger center, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So I'm gonna click consecutively all six of these trees. Now there's a stagger in order of selection if I click this, it's going to remember that selection that I just did. The next thing is we have a start and an end. So a start is how it'll animate end into the scene. And an end is if you want it to animate out. Most of the time I'm mainly just animating in, but it is cool that there's an option. So the next tab down here is the different type of effects. It's either no effect, which I'm not sure why it's there, it just means nothing. We have pop in, sky drop, ground rise, or implode. And then the next ones we have the start time. So this is just 
The same thing as moving it right in here. Say I want it to start at six seconds. Now it's moved the six seconds in here. This is just a, an interactive toggle there. Now duration is how long the effect will take place. This is just when it'll start. Now ease in will control the type of animation and the staggering will control whether everything comes in at once or together. So right now, by default, it is pop in, which pop in means it's going to be a scale from zero to the size you set it up in Lumion. Kind of a cool effect. And let's go ahead and set stagger. So what stagger will do is it'll do if you have it all the way, it'll do one at a time. And that's exactly how I selected it. I can have an invert, so it goes the opposite way. I could also go back into here and uncheck this. And it's just kind of going the way it wants now. Now I'm going to turn that back on really quick. And play with some other options. So if I turn the stagger just slightly off, we'll have at least a couple ones coming on at once. It leaves a nice smooth animation in between them. Ease in. If I turn it off, they're just going to kind of just pop in. If I hit ease in, they kind of more snap, kind of a boomerang effect. It's just the style wise. So the other thing that we can look at is how it's going to animate in. So that was pop in, scale for, basically scale from zero up. Now we have sky drop. This is just like the sky drop we had before. It's going to come from the sky. We also have a move distance, which if we go up, up here, that means it's coming from even further away. Or we can get it really close, and it's just, it's just pop it in. And there's also a tab for invisible before start. So you can actually have them all sitting there wait, waiting to go. You're starting to see how many how many options we can start having and we're only in a couple of these effects we have ground rise which is the opposite of sky drop all the same kind of selection and controls here and we have implode which implode is pretty cool it'll it'll kind of fan them out and you can change how far away they fan them out or if they're invisible before they start If they're not invisible before they start, that you can see them sitting there in a different location. All right, so we'll do one last little thing here, and I'll probably leave it to the more advanced animation to really get more into this. You get the idea, the real basic concept of it. I'm going to add another phasing group, and in this one, I'm going to add all these kind of trees back here. I'm not going to worry about selection order. And right now they're just with no stagger they just all come at the same time if i do like a half stagger you'll start to see some come in or a full stagger change the duration so they're coming slower i could also do sky drop you get the idea now i can independently edit these groups i didn't title them correctly but I can give them whatever unique name I need. And keep things organized. Well, that and that's kind of the idea. That's how we built. That's how the winery animations were built in here. The trickiest part is you had to import all of these objects individually and then animate them. So if you need to break your SketchUp model or whatever model you have into so many smaller pieces to bring them in and animate, it, it is a lot of work, and um, that's that's a tricky that's a tricky thing to balance. Look at a uh, look at all these pieces coming in here. All the bottles, our individual bottles that were brought in as models. So that's the effort it takes to break, to have everything animate in individually like that. Otherwise, you're going to have a whole chunk of a house animate in. It doesn't work that way. It does work really well if you happen to have a lot of interior Lumion objects or something like trees or, or people or cars or furniture. 
because then you could just grab a bunch of them and have them all animate independently. Otherwise, you just have to stack them all. That's the big problem of it. But I'm gonna leave it at that. It's a really, really fun and powerful effect that requires definitely some forethought and thinking and uh, planning. But it, re it results in some pretty incredible effects and, and dynamic presentations. So that's the phasing effect. Alright, so I covered a lot of other content like people and objects and cars, but I figured we can talk a little bit about fine detail nature here. Again, it's the same idea. You search for new and we'll get all of the new type of objects. Now, this time I can just give you a, a hint. There's a lot of different types of ferns and some smaller bush. Yeah, it's turning smaller. <laughs> smaller plants like this that have come along. And again, I wouldn't be too, I wouldn't be too worried about these guys. I feel like you can probably add a decent amount of these guys without choking your computer. It's the trees that are really rough. And we <laughs> And we got a decent amount of them. Now I'm not going to sit here and place them all and look at them, but I will play this B-roll of all of them together. The quality is is on par from what it was before, which is a very high bar. So these, all of these trees are super great. Just be careful with your use of them, like always. Now. I'm going to move on to a little miscellaneous feature here, too, that has got me a little excited. All right, so I'm going to select all instances of this, of these uh, vines, or the, these kind of want to be grape vines. It's just kind of a proxy substitution. But one thing that Lumion has added in 11 is you go to randomize size. This might be too many things to try at once. Okay. Now we get a bar showing a what percentage difference. So if you remember from previous versions, you could do a randomized size and then you had like 10, 20, and 30 percent, I think. And then they just added randomized size and lost that. And yeah, I missed it. So they've brought it back and give you more control over the kind of variations in size for your plants. So you're not trying to make them all look the same. Minor little feature in there. Really cool. Another thing I might as well cover while I'm right here is we got a couple more real skies. And once I pick this out, we'll showcase some pre-rendered shots of them all, but I'll show you kind of where they are. So before we only had polygon skies, so if you see another sky that's not polygon, that's a new one. <laughs> so these guys are all new. And some of them are, some of them are really impressive. So we got quite a few more evening shots, a couple more morning shots, well, quite a bit more overcast shots. Actually, no new sunset shots. It's fine. One more clear, and I think these are all the same nights as before. So here's a shot with all the different ones. Definitely worth playing around with. I, I love all the options we already have. I'm glad to have more. Another super tiny little thing I forgot to, to mention is when you go to place nature, there's now a weeds category. So we got a couple more ever motion, ever motion uh, objects in the form of weeds. <laughs> hey, little fellow is good. It's just kind of funny. We can add weed store projects. So that's a good pack we got. So 
Something else we got is the, the uh, wind effect has been changed. Now it's not just a big fat slider, now we have wind speed, we have wind direction, and we even have foliage wind. Not only there, but we do also have it in build mode. You have wind speed and wind direction. So in build mode, you can watch the trees get blown away. <laughs> so that's, that's fun. I really like the wind. That's always been a big aspect of Lumion is this kind of living environment. Now you can even edit in it. Especially these fine detail nature shots. All right, so this might look familiar. This is Villa Casale, which was featured in the Lumion 10 release trailer. So now we have access to that beautiful scene. Actually done by someone, a friend of mine, Marco. So these have some beautiful, great views. And what we're gonna talk about is new materials in Lumion 11. This is tricky because they're all scattered throughout several new areas and there isn't a new search bar in here, but I can give you a hint on where several of them are. So if you search in soils and you happen to find some new ones with the D displacements, these are pretty much all new. Stuff at the very end at the higher numbers with displacement are new materials. There's some, been some great new uh, carpets. Let's take a look at some of these carpets with displacement. It's pretty cool. So displacement map. <laughs> we can get more. It actually looks pretty decently for a carpet. I definitely know that they're there's definitely some new Evermotion bricks. Maybe we should try this on the wall. These might be some, but... Oops, I just made the floor that. Oh, whatever, let's make this. Let's see, where was the new ones? Not Polygon, it's the new Evermotion ones. Here we go. So, some pretty cool new materials. They came in different types of brick. There's some cool slate walls. They look better in the there we go in the sun. Anyways, again, I'll show some B-roll of um, of the different materials. Um, they're just kind of scattered everywhere, so it's tricky to just kind of run through but they're they're spread out all throughout in here little bits of everything ever motion or D most likely they're new materials but you get the idea they're they're continuously adding better more improved textures to the library um, time for some more miscellaneous updates this is super awesome I'm pretty sure you could not do this before but now you can just move keyframes around. I, I, I don't think you could do that before. So little tiny thing that could save a lot of headaches in a pinch. The ability to update things like that. Maybe it was just this. We can move things around. We couldn't do this before. You know, big deal. But these little things can... <laughs> can cause quite some frustrations in the right moment. Look at that beautiful brick ground. <laughs> well, I think I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel now on effects. I don't want to take too much time on a lot of this. But there is one last little thing that I, I remembered mentioned. The uh, pertaining to materials, Lumion, let's see, this is moderately shiny. 
Lumion has revamped the glossiness value. Now you get a much wider gamut in glossiness ranges. Will you see it? I, I, I think you will. Will most people care? Maybe not. But it's a uh, it is a little thing that they they added in, and if done right, usually before one, there really wasn't much going on. Like there wasn't anything going on here before, and now you get some more some more play in the lower ends. When working with substance and other things, I noticed that Lumion cuts off really early. They seem to fix that. All right, that is that about it for all of the materials um, material I have to cover. So that is plenty of new effects, uh, a lot of them. Now I'm gonna name off a couple things that I'm not really even gonna show. It says there is improved grass lighting. Now this is one of those things that I tried to kind of see, I would have to have Lumion 10 open right next to it, but they improved the way that grass reacts to the sun. I'll take their word for it. And Let's see, let's try a daytime shot. But they said it, it, it's just one of those minor fixes to help get more realism. I remember they fixed the water not too long ago, even though I thought the water was just fine. But just that little extra effect in there. Um, they did add live sinks for BricsCAD. I'm not a user of BricsCAD, but they're continually pushing more of that. Um, also, they've enabled the ability to do stylized effects inside of the panorama the 360 panoramas previously did not allow very artistic effects they're very limited on what they can do but now we can do some more stylized approaches to 360 images i know a lot of people use these i i actually haven't used these in a bit not not because i don't like them i just haven't had the request but i can see the value in them and be able to now have 360 spheres with some more stylized effects so that's all the minor things i can really think of this is a uh, lumion 11 so all right so that concludes the tour of features that i wanted to showcase from lumion 11. i hope they helped you out under help you understand and see what these these new effects and new features are, how they work. So I hope seeing it in action and hearing my th my thoughts and comments during it was something to help you understand and your big decision whether or not you're going to jump into Lumion into Lumion 11. Um, please feel free to leave any comments for questions. I'd love to answer any questions you have on there. I, I promise I'll answer any questions I see in the comments. I really appreciate you your time and watching this watching these features. Hopefully you're able to jump to specific features you needed. That's a long video. All right. Keep an eye out for my future tutorials. Until next time. Bye.